Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today on the Things You Missed in Elden Ring series, we're covering an area that I'm not sure what to call yet. If I'm honest, you will know because this video will have a title. But I'm sat here thinking, what the actual heck am I going to call this video? Very, very briefly, one of the areas that we're covering is the Forbidden Lands, and that's where you find me at the moment. But this area is so tiny that it did not deserve its own video. So I thought, ah, let's wrap up the Volcano Manor invasions, finish off Volcano Manor, and I'll show you another couple of things as well. If you don't have this Site of Grace yet, or if you've forgotten how to get to the Forbidden Lands, you just take the eastern exit from Lanedale Royal Capital, and as long as you've beaten Morgoth, you'll be able to get past the seal and get to where I am here. So the first thing we're going to do is beeline it all the way through the Forbidden Lands, right to the end of the area here. I'm aware there's one or two things I'm missing, I'll cover it later. We're going to sprint past the Blackblade Kindred, get the Site of Grace, head up the lift, and just a short journey into the mountain tops of the giants, you can grab the map for the area. As I say, we're going to wrap up the last bit of Volcano Manor, so we will progress through the mountain tops of the giants briefly. We're not looting anything. That will be covered in its own video in the mountain tops of the giants. Before we progress any further, I meet you now back at the Forbidden Land site of Grace. More specifically, I've gone back up the lift, and I'm at the top of the lift, facing out of the southeast exit to this building. As you start running forwards, fade to black, and you'll now have to face the Fell Twin Duo boss fight, which is just two strongish putrid ogres. Actually, a regular ogre and a putrid ogre. They're really nothing to call home about. Then you'll get 30,000 ruins. Ruins? Then you'll get 30,000 runes and the Omen Killer Rollo Spirit Ashes. Once they are defeated, you'll be back in the land of the living. You can head to the end of the bridge and light the Sight of Grace. And now you'll be at the Divine Tower of East Altus. As with all the Divine Towers, go up the massive lift. I'll meet you right at the top where you can restore Morgoth's Great Rune. Now we're going to go back once again to the Forbidden Land Site of Grace and rest until it's night time. There's a bunch of vulgar militia around that I'm going to take out just to be cautious so they don't get involved during the next big fight that we're going to have. Carry on heading forwards, head to the east, and you'll see a Knight's Cavalry. The terrain, the area that we're fighting him in, make this a really annoying fight. But you see here, I do it without too much issue. And as you're so familiar with fighting Knight's Cavalry by now, hopefully you also won't have any issues. And then you'll get the Ash of War Phantom Slash. Now we'll continue on through the Forbidden Lands and grab the very small amount of items here. There's a load of Scarab that will replenish your Crimson Tears and your Cerulean Tears, along with a lot of enemies we can take out. But the only items of note are a Somber Smithing Stone 7, up in the jaw of the skull of this tremendous creature here. I don't know what this once was, but I'm glad that it's long dead. And then further up, we'll come across a golden seed. And now we know a black blade kindred will spawn because we already ran past him once. So I'm going to go in fully prepared, get my mimic tear out and die. So let's try that again, shall we? This time we kill him without too many issues at all. And we get 60,000 runes, the gargoyles black blades and the gargoyles black axe. Now we will once again head up the grand lift of rolled back into the mountain tops of the giants and a little bit further ahead is a sight of grace that we can light. A cleverer person than me would have told you to light this sight of grace previously so you could just teleport back here again. Oh no 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 no, you need the cardio. And then who is that up ahead that I see? Is that a Yura? <gasps> Deception! Tis Shabriri. He gave his flesh to Shabriri, apparently, and advises us that if we're to go ahead with the burning of the Erd Tree, we will have to sacrifice Melina to do so. And he wants us to journey far below the capital, seek an audience with the Three Fingers, and become the Lord of Chaos. In doing so, we can use ourselves as kindling and save Melina. And that is exactly what we will be doing, my friends, as we explore the subterranean depths very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Now I'm just going to demo to you the power of the enemies here and give us even more reason why we're just going to sprint through this whole area, do the assassination request and get the hell out. I don't want to spoil this area for you yet, so I've skipped a large chunk of the run here, but it's fairly self-explanatory. It honestly is. Just climb up the mountain, run along the long chain, and you'll be here in no time. I know, easier said than done, but I believe in you. You can do it, Brave Tarnished. Seek the invasion sign of Juno Hoslo, Brave Tarnished.
and invade him. Now this dude has got my favorite armor set in the game. I absolutely adore his armor set. Also, don't engage him in combat immediately because you'll receive his emote, Hoslo's oath, but only if you don't instantly attack him. This is a damn hard fight. He whizzes around like nobody's business and his whip is awesome. As with all of these invasions though, you can try them as many times as you need. And as I already mentioned, when he dies, you will get his petal whip and also his full armor set. Now, finally, many, many videos later, we can go back to Volcano Manor, speak to Lady Tanith, and she'll reward us with our final reward, the Taker's Cameo, which will grant you the ability to restore HP every time you slay an enemy. Also, if you didn't grab it before, I'm just going to go back to Recusant Bernal and get Gelmir's Fury off of him for helping him with his contract earlier. And before we complete Volcano Manor, I'm going to grab all of his skills as well along with speaking to Patches to make sure I'm not missing anything important from him, because this will be the last time Volcano Manor is as it is right now. Now, tell Lady Tanith that you do wish for an audience with their lord, and prepare for yeah, one of the more anticlimactic fights of the game, honestly, because it's a gimmick fight. It's a fun gimmick, and I really like it, don't get me wrong, but it's quite easily cheesable, and that's what we will be doing. <laughs> As you enter this boss fight, grab the Serpent Hunter just in front of you and equip it. Just during this boss, its ability, the Great Serpent Hunt, gets a super special effect. It has insane damage and insane range, and it is specifically designed to defeat this boss and pretty much perma-stagger him. It is used in a few speedruns and no hit runs actually, especially level 1 runs because of the fact it has no stat requirements. So it is a really powerful weapon, even on its own, but it's crazy powerful deliberately for this boss fight. And if you make sure you've got it equipped along with nothing else, then summon your Mimic tier, you got two of them. So whilst we're wailing on the boss with our charged heavy attacks to perma-stagger him, I'm actually gonna very briefly touch on quite a light aspect of the lore. I am not a lore guy when it comes to these games. There is a lot of people that I'm sure know a hell of a lot more than me and will do it a lot better than me. They're not gonna lie, the views on the lore videos are pretty spicy, so it makes me want to consider getting into it. But I digress. For now, the reason I bring it up is because the one bit of lore I do know about this, when you're speaking to a few different characters, they talk about this giant serpent that ate and killed Rikard, and it is revealed to you subtly by other characters, and very, very unsubtly throughout the cutscene in this boss fight, the giant snake actually is Lord Rikard. And watching the cutscene playing out and actually talking to the characters and getting invested in the lore is such an awesome moment. Really, really badass moment. I'm just going to interrupt myself incredibly briefly because I am awful at plugging myself, so I'd like to take a few seconds to say, you're awesome, please like, please subscribe, please become a member, thank you, goodbye. And for defeating him, you will be rewarded with Rykard's Great Rune and the Remembrance of the Blasphemous, which you can then trade in for the Blasphemous Blade, my number one most favourite weapon in the entire goddamn game. If you want to know more about it, go and check out my personal top 10 faith weapons. I talk about it a lot in that video. For now, grab the ice circo from the pile of corpses here, rest at the site of grace, and I'll meet you for the next part of the video. Now, let's teleport back to the main Volcano Manor site of grace and tell everyone that you've just murderized their lord. And they're all pretty chill with it. Because don't forget, the recusants, their whole philosophy is culling the weak and killing their own kind. This is just their way. They're totally accepting of the fact that they're just like, hey, you were stronger than him, you killed him. We'd have done the same. Like, what? <laughs> Are you sure? And you can also grab the My Thanks emote just here before speaking to Bernal, who will tell you more of the same. Again, that he harbors you no ill will. It was exactly within your right as a recusant to do this. Cool, fair enough. And Patches is the most understanding of all, as the most conniving, cunning, backstabbing motherfucker in this whole game. So, now that you've spoken to everyone, exhausted their dialogue, and completed Volcano Manor, head back down into the Rykard Lord of Blasphemy arena, and you will see Lady Tanith feasting upon his corpse, absorbing him into her body to become the next Great Serpent, still wanting to devour the world. So yeah, let's kill her. I don't really like the sound of that, so let's make sure she dies and you'll instantly be invaded by Tanith's knight, who is essentially just a Crucible knight. Get him dead too, and you'll be rewarded with the aspects of the Crucible breath, 
You can also go and loot her for her consort's armor set. And that's it, you've now finished Volcano Manor. Congratulations. I'm just gonna head back to Round Table Hold, grab myself the Blasphemous Blade, and also pick up a few pieces of boss armor that I forgot to grab the last time I was here. And that's it for this in between -y area. That sets us up to now do the mountain tops of the giants. We've also got a few other side areas on the go. I'm not sure exactly which order these videos will be coming out in, but I also want to take you through the subterranean shunning grounds and the lake of rot at the very least. One or both of them might already be up by the time this goes out. Haven't decided the full timeline yet, but there we go. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.